I don't have any slides, so I thought I'll just speak extempore in terms of uh, what I've done in the past and how we work with academia. Uh, when I was at Biocon, where I was the head of R&D, we would have people coming in from all over the world, but not from Indian institutions coming and talking to us. It's kind of interesting that I think that is changing now over time. And then more recently, uh, over the last seven years at the Gates Foundation, we very much work with academia and industry for primarily doing research into products that can be useful to have an impact. So just as a quick example, how would you create a vaccine for COVID if you did not do research? You cannot possibly create a vaccine for COVID. How would you create a diagnostic for COVID? How do you know what PCR is and how PCR can be used to amplify this virus and make a measurement or even an antigen-based assay, right? So there was very, very, very fundamental, powerful reasons to collaborate. You cannot, many, much of this research is done in research institutions. The fact that there could be an adenovirus or a, a cell-based assay for a virus or mRNA, for example, or CRISPR technology, all these kinds of things are very much driven by academic research and the foundation actually has supported a lot of these kinds of different pieces of work around the globe and also mostly focused on phase three clinical late stage development in India. How do we move this back to early stage development? How can we do more early stage development in India, countries like India? Do we have the right environment for it? Is there interest in doing it? Is something that I'm very, very interested in. I want to understand how do we tap into the intellect that is there, for example, in this audience, such wonderful questions uh, even first year, second year students are asking, how do we build that up? And why is it important? Again, coming back to the point of when you have public health crises, I'll give you an example, another example from an infectious disease. We work quite a bit on infectious diseases. Uh, TB elimination, the government has said we need TB elimination by 2025. Do we have the right tools to do it? This is a problem that is not a, maybe a global rich country problem. It's a problem of primarily poorer countries. Is there something we could do there? There is surely, it's also surely a social problem, it's a nutrition problem, but it's also a problem where you need treatment. So if you have MDXTB or XDRTB, how do you, what do you do for those patients, right? There's a very, very clinical question there. Can you diagnose it, first of all? So you have again a nucleic acid amplification test for TB. Can you, when a patient walks into the clinic, can you see what kind of drugs they're resistant to? And can you have a diagnostic test for that? Right, I was recent, I was yesterday, I came to Pune yesterday, I was at a company called My Labs, and they're looking at, can we have multiple drug resistance being picked up from a single sample straight away? Uh, today, the way the system works is you will do a sputum test, then you will go, if you're, then later on you'll check for resistance for, you know, rifampicin or isocyanate. How do you do this more quickly? Clearly a public health need, because it will help patients. It's a fairly complex problem, but it requires us to sequence bacteria, understand drug sensitivity, all kinds of complicated issues, and it has a huge impact if we can't solve this problem, right? If uh, XDR-TB spreads, can create a ter terrible problem. I think similarly, one could argue that um, in um, disease like malaria, in other diseases of importance to us, and I will also talk about another very, very important uh, project for the government of India from a public health perspective, anemia. Very high percentage of anemia. Uh, despite uh, iron fortification programs being run constantly, this doesn't seem to have been such a big improvement if you look at the recent surveys. So are there other sources of anemia? What are the other problems that we may be seeing? Is it non-iron deficiency anemia? There's obviously hemoglobinopathies, sickle cell disease, many, many other things. Do we have tests to determine them, figure this out quite easily? Is there a simple test to determine it? And what kind of thinking would one have to do as a researcher to understand some of these problems? Of course, there's anemia biology, We've been talking to ICMR on some of these topics and you know, we're sort of interested in understanding how can we support research in these areas that are of national interest. So there's just three examples I gave you know, of uh, you know, COVID, uh, the whole environment, antibodies, uh, detection, 
vaccines. Um, I just want to add one more thing on vaccines, adjuvants. So I want to ask um, the young students over here, do you know what adjuvants are? Have you heard of adjuvants? Okay, I think I saw somebody say yes. Right, so, so aluminum is of old, aluminum salts are a, a famous example of an old adjuvant. But during the COVID vaccine development, two new adjuvants came up, which were very, very, you know, first time used at a large scale, CPG and this TLR78 agonist that Bharat Biotech did. And again, these all comes out of academic research. So it would be great to think about, uh, I mean, there are again many, many ideas that one could imagine. So these kinds of things are important. How do you do research? It, has, it can be very much relevant. It can have a big impact on society and health. Uh, so I talked about that. I talked a little bit about TB, importance of TB, XDR-TB, kind of diagnostics one needs to be able to treat patients when they walk into a clinic with a persistent cough that's been lasting or malaria, which is a disease that we don't think so much about, but again, very important for Africa, but certainly important even in the tribal areas of India. If you've seen uh, young children or people really suffering from malaria, you will see that it's actually kind of a pretty important problem from public health perspective. Again, if you start building uh, resistance, drug resistance, which is already happening, because you're not able to treat everybody and eliminate or transmission, Again, this problem continues to go on. So I'll stop there, but you know, happy to hopefully take questions later on if there is time. Thank you.